the president next we would like to hand over to judge uh, silver cat right to put questions to the accused you may now proceed thank you president mr nuan chia uh, almost two weeks ago you gave a very helpful and comprehensive statement to the court uh, and this morning you have um, added further detail to that in your statement uh, during the uh, responses to the opening statements you promised to assist the Cambodian people whom you say you love to understand Cambodian history for so long as your health is good I thank you for that promise and for the way in which you have added to the details during your extended statement this morning. It was a coherent uh, and very helpful statement. I want to take you back to one or two of the points. You told the court this morning that you joined the communist movement first in Thailand and later then in Cambodia because you felt such s compassion uh, for the Cambodian people whom you said were being severely oppressed and mistreated by the French colonial powers at that time. When you came to Cambodia uh, in about 1951, did you, in fact, join the Indo-Chinese Communist Party? Did you hear my question, Mr. Nguyen Chia? Did you join the uh, Indo-Chinese Communist Party when you returned to Cambodia from Thailand in the early 1950s? <coughs> so. Nguyen Chia, Mr. President, Your Honours, allow me to respond to Your Honours' question. When I arrived in Cambodia in 1951, there was a Vietnamese person who persuaded me to join the Indo-Chinese Communist Party because it was a principle, as he said, that wherever I was from or which political party I was from, if I came to conduct activity in this country, it doesn't matter whether I was Vietnamese, Laos, or other nationality, I had to convert myself to join the Indo-Chinese Communist Party. I agreed with this principle because it is the it was the party principle the principle which stated that wherever we went we had to conduct activities under the line of that party your honor thank you and at that time, as you told us this morning, the Indo-Chinese Communist Party was in fact organized and uh, run by the Vietnamese. Is that correct? Response, it is correct, Your Honor. 
the Indochinese Communist Party was established by the Vietnamese. It was the Vietnamese who organized, ordered, and expanded and publicized the party to Laos and Cambodia. Then, of course, there was the um, Declaration of Independence uh, in 1953, just two years after you came back from Thailand, uh, and the Geneva Conference in 1954, when Cambodia's independence was recognized. Was that the point at which the Khmer Revolutionary People's Party was established? Bam. Response. So far as I recollect, uh, Hindu Chinese Communist Party had been established uh, long ago, not at that moment. Because the Hindu Chinese Communist Party had been established uh, by the Vietnamese and it was installed in 1930, so far as I recollect. But a new party, a new communist party, was established uh, in uh, 1951 called the Khmer Revolutionary People's Party. Is that correct? Response, Your Honor. Vietnam was of the opinion that if they used the Indo-Chinese Communist Party as it was, Cambodian people in particular could not accept and they would not like the Vietnamese. For that, the Vietnamese or Vietnam had their strategy to divide Indo-Chinese Communist Party into three parties. It was their tactic. It was not a principle of the party. However, although Indo-Chinese Communist Party was divided into three, one being in Laos, the People Revolutionary Party of Laos and And here in Cambodia, Kampuchea Revolutionary People's Party, and in Vietnam, the Labour Party or Lao Dong Party. And as I already indicated, although it was divided into three parties, it doesn't matter whether it was the Laos Party or Kampuchean Party, none was independent. We had no mastery. We could not initiate anything or make our own decision. The parties were merely under the control and uh, of uh, the Lao Dong or the Labour Party of Vietnam. Yes, thank you. So <clears throat> you have told us then that the Khmer Revolutionary People's Party was still dominated by the Vietnamese. After the um, independence and the Geneva Conference, 
did the intellectuals who were members of the communist movement, particularly in France, did they begin to return to Cambodia? Response. I don't know much about this because I was not in charge of the intellectuals. I did not know people, who, the Cambodian people who studied in France, whether they joined the French party or other party, it was out of my knowledge. Well, later on in 1960, was a new communist party established, this time called the Khmer Workers' Party. And was this the first truly Cambodian communist party? Response, as I already emphasized, Cambodian people in 1960 would like to free ourselves from the control of uh, by Vietnam so some members of the party including grandfather Tu Samut Salot Sa and I myself had discussed this and agreed that if we did not have our own party with our own political party independent to others, in particular the Communist Party of Vietnam, our country, our party would have to be still under the influence of the Vietnam and will would have to receive orders from Vietnam. That's why we had to organize a party to create uh, strategies, parties line and statute different from those of the Vietnam's party. We wanted our party to be different from that of Vietnam. Did the Vietnamese know about the establishment of the Khmer Workers' Party? And if they did, did they support its establishment? To my knowledge, the Vietnamese must have known the establishment of the party. Not only did the Vietnamese not support uh, this party, but instead they had attempted to destroy this party by whatever means. Uh, first, they tried uh, to divide uh, party members internally in our own party. At that time, it was known as the Workers' Party of Cambodia. They appointed the undercover uh, party members in order to eavesdrop the uh, party's line, especially Vietnam was all happy because 
the design and the establishment of the party line strategy as well as tactics. The Workers' Party of Campuchia did not consult with or ask for approval from the Communist Party of Vietnam at all. Hence, they were not at all happy with us. And as a result, they designed the plan in order to destroy uh, the party, both uh, in Cambodia and, and in foreign affairs or I internationally. So overall, they want to continue to take control of the Campuchia Workers' Party. At that time, Trương Trinh, the uh, secretary of Lao Dong Vietnam or Communist Party of Vietnam, said that Vietnam, Campuchia, and Laos are like a house with three rooms, but the three countries are under one roof. It means that we have three separate rooms, but it is under one roof. It simply means that even if there are now three separate parties, but these separate parties must be subordinate to the Vietnamese Communist Party because the three parties live under one roof. So this is what uh, Trương Trinh has repeated time and time again. Apart from that, certain Vietnamese cadre, especially those in the leadership apparatus, often say that even those Vietnam could, could liberate the South Vietnam so long as they could not take control of Cambodia, it would be useless because it would be a waste of resources of Vietnam. If we fail to take control of Cambodia, it would be a loss for our party. So this is my response to your question as to whether or not they were happy or not, but this is what uh, they have reacted and behave. And to my recollection, Han Van Dong said as follow. Han Van Dong said Once Cambodia is liberated, he did not mention anything about, uh, you know, praising or appreciating Cambodian uh, people. But uh, he instead said it was a miracle once Cambodia is uh, liberated. It seems like uh, God has come down to us in order to save Cambodian people. It was not liberated by the Cambodian people or by the party in Kampuchea, but it was liberated by something else. And Mr. Ngung Yap uh, said, I have already mentioned that Mr. Ngung Yap asked Pol Pot as to what the area, the total area of arable land in Cambodia. And Pol Pot at that time said, uh, some 30 years ago, Pol Pot said, we had around 80 million hectares, say the accused. But the arable land, which can be put into good agricultural use, amount to about 30 million hectares, say the accused. And Mr. Ngung Yap said, in Vietnamese, which means 
it is very delicious. So I thought to myself at that time, what he meant by being delicious. And then later on I realized that, well, it was what he meant by uh, delicious, and it was really delicious for them. For example, we have uh, you know, uh, made a land concession of 90 years uh, to the Vietnamese, or 99 year, correction interpreter, 99 years uh, concessionary lease uh, to uh, the Vietnamese uh, company. I have to speak uh, frankly because I believe uh, that this court uh, want to find justice, the justice that is beneficial, that is useful uh, for the younger generation. And I want the younger generation to remember and to know uh, who are our real enemy and who are our real friends. In the past, many Vietnamese leaders did not want us to liberate Phnom Penh because they consistently told us that you, comrades, did not have to try to liberate Phnom Penh. Once Prenoko was released, then I, we would be able to liberate Phnom Penh within 24 hours. So you, uh, comrades, did not have to do anything. You simply act as the usher who find the path for us to get into your country. So this is the common uh, words that they have publicized not only within the military rank in Cambodia but also among Cambodian people at the grassroots level as well. And Pol Pot has said that those who control it and did it, they reap the benefit. So it means that if they liberated Phnom Penh, then they would take over Phnom Penh. There is no question about that. So this clearly reveal the ambition, the greed of the Vietnamese in order to eliminate Cambodian people and to annex Cambodia or swallow the Cambodian territory by the Vietnamese leader. This is the truth, Your Honours. Later, there was another party established called the Communist Party of Kampuchea. Uh, and that was simply a new name for the Khmer Workers Party that you have just told us was hated and opposed by the Vietnamese. Is that correct? The reason uh, to the reason of the change from the the Workers Party to the Communist uh, Party of Kampuchea is as follow. First, if we use the word uh, Workers Party, it overlaps with parties established in Vietnam and China, so it was not appropriate. Therefore, the leaders of the Cambodian Workers' Party decided to change the name of this party to the Communist Party of Cambodia. But I would like to be precise on this uh, particular point. It was not the idea to bring in the communism and to impose it in Cambodia and we did not attempt to achieve the communist ideology immediately after we established this uh, party because at that time, Cambodian society as a whole was not a socialist society. And how could we swiftly change into communism? But we merely put the name Communist Party of Cambodia because we did not want to have an overlap, a name, overlapping names of the party established in Vietnam. We want a different name. 
why 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 did we want to have uh, different names because in vietnam they had weak workers party in vietnam and cambodia we had workers party in cambodia as well so we do not want to have the same party names so other people might perceive this two party as more or less the same uh, party because of this reason we at the a leadership uh, level of the party decided to change the name of the party but actually only the name of the party was changed but the line of the political line of the party as well as the tactical line and strategic line of the party was maintained which is to which is the revolutionary Uh, line of Cambodia. So we did not change our political lines, but we uh, we simply changed the name of the uh, party. It was a mere change of the over the uh, outside pictures of the party. Because the uh, Communist Party of Cambodia and its leaders were determined to show the world that uh, it was an independent movement, that is, a movement independent of the Vietnamese, did the Communist Party of Kampuchea for some time say that the Communist movement had only started in 1960 when the um, Khmer Workers' Party was established? I'm sorry, Your Honor. I don't think I understand your question. I'm sorry. It was a little bit long. Later on, the Communist Party of Cambodia said that the communist movement in Cambodia started in 1960. Was that, in fact, to show that that was the first independent communist movement? In Cambodia, you didn't want to be associated with the Vietnamese communist movement that had started with the Indo-Chinese Communist Party much earlier. Nun Chia. That's correct, Your Honor. involvement in um, the communist movement. When you came back from Thailand, you were uh, trained then by the Vietnamese in uh, Vietnam for a period. Is that correct? Nguyen Chia. In my opinion, I was not alone at that time who was lured by the Vietnamese in order to build up their internal force. I think they try to persuade all Cambodians who have not understood the the uh, characteristic of the uh, Vietnamese who has always attempted to swallow Cambodian uh, territory. So they try to lure those people into building uh, their internal forces so that they could continue to control Cambodia. This is the truth, and I think uh, that is what it is. But by the time the Khmer Revolutionary People's Party was established in 1960, you were one of those in Cambodia who uh, had studied communist theory and ideology and you were in a good position to be one of the leaders of that party.
Party. Is that correct? Nunjia. Your Honours, the principle of the uh, the principle underlying the Communist Party of Cambodia is not the individual ownership of the party. So the party is the representation of uh, co a collective uh, responsibility. So we work uh, collectively in this party. And I would like to add a bit to this point. Certain Khmer people whom Vietnam lure into studying in North Vietnam following the Geneva Conference in 1954, they grabbed the Vietnamese culture which they use the term big brother or small brother or so in the party. And in our party back in Cambodia, none was considered big brother or small brother. We work equally. We are equal. We work in along the line of our responsibility and designation. And at that time, Pol Pot was proposed to be called the Secretary General of the party. At that time, Pol Pot s said uh, he refused uh, this title. He did not want uh, to be called the Secretary General. He simply wanted Secretary of the party because our party was small and with smaller population and we did not yet have experience in uh, resistance so we should not uh, try to promote ourselves but we will have to be moderate we have this was the motivation of the party at that time so there was no such a thing as big brother or small brother in the party you were elected Deputy Secretary of the Khmer Revolutionary People's Party in 1960, uh, and shortly after, its name, after that, its name was changed to the Kampuchea Workers' Party, and you remained the Deputy Secretary for that party too. Is that, is that the case? Nguyen I was not the deputy chairman. I was the deputy secretary. Deputy chairman means different thing. Uh, deputy deputy chairman uh, refers to the administrative things, but uh, deputy secretary responsible for the party. So I, I think we should use these two terms uh, separately, and I don't want to have confusion uh, here because we uh, distinguish between party I mean, we separate uh, between different branches of the state. We have the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary. Just to clarify that, point, I did in fact use the correct term, deputy secretary, and I just want you to confirm that you were deputy secretary of the Khmer Revolutionary People's Party in 1960, and after the change of the name to the Kampuchea Workers' Party, you remained the Deputy Secretary of that party. Is that correct? Nunjia. The story was as follows. Well, 
I have to go into a much more detailed uh, story. I was the deputy secretary of the Communist Party of Cambodia, the f uh, f the predecessor of the Workers' Party of Cambodia. But there was an internal problem in the party. In in around nineteen. 54, 55 or 26, following the Geneva Conference in 1994, Siu Heng, who was the, my uncle in law, resigned from the party. And he served the army at uh, the Lonnol administration. This more or less affected me because at that time there were two parties. We have the undercover party or secretive parties and open party. But we did not use the word party, actually we used the word group. Uh, and these two groups of people have responsibility to work openly. For example, they run the news media outlet in order to propagandize in the, in the country. But there was a secretive group of people or party at that time as well. And while you were Deputy Secretary of the Kampuchea Workers' Party, was the Secretary to Samut? Your Honour, may I ask for clarification? What year are you referring to? Um, This is, of course, before he disappeared, but he was the first secretary of the Kampuchea Workers' Party, uh, which had previously been the Khmer Revolutionary People's Party. Is that, the, is that uh, correct? Nunjia. He disappeared in 1962. But before that, Siu Heng, who was appointed by, the Viet by Vietnam to be the secretary, and at that time, uh, Tu Samut came to Phnom Penh. And he worked as a member of the party. Actually, Siu Heng was the secretary of the party. Myself and Salot So were assistant or arms to Tu Samut because Tu Samut was all alone at that time. And later on, when Siu Heng uh, resigned, then we convened a party congress for the first time in 1960. And then uh, Tu Samut was appointed the secretary of the party. And I remained the deputy secretary of the party then. Aside from that, they, they set up the standing committee, which uh, include uh, Pol Pot, Yeng Seri, and other members. At that time, you uh, held a more responsible office in the uh, Workers' Party than uh, Selot Sa, uh, whose revolutionary name was Pol Pot, or Yeng Sari. Is that correct? Nun Jie.
Your Honors. I admit uh, that I was the Deputy Secretary in charge of education. I was not uh, been designated. I had not been designated to be the chairman of the line office or department, or so. When did Salot Sa become the secretary of the Cambodia Workers Party? Nun Chia. Are you referring to the Workers' Party or Communist Party of Cambodia, Your Honour? The Cambodia Workers' Party. Um, in uh, paragraph 22 of the, um, of the closing order, after Tu Samut disappeared, it was stated that Salot Sa became the new secretary and you remained the Deputy Secretary. Is that correct? Nun Jie. Following the disappearance of Tu Samut in 1962, We convene the party's congress in 1963, in 1963 to my recollection, and the congress at that time selected Purple to be the secretary of the party and I remain the Deputy Secretary of that party. I actually tender my resignation but the Congress at that time refused uh, my uh, application for resignation so I decided to stay on. But actually I did not want to be associated with uh, Siu Heng who actually left the party so I want to be uh, I want to clear any doubt of my uh, relations with Siu Heng and the reason you wanted to clear any doubts uh, about the relationship uh, with Siu Heng who was your uncle by marriage uh, was because he had defected from the communist ma movement uh, and joined Sihanouk's government. Is that the situation? Response. So far as I remember, there were a few issues First, the reason that he abandoned the Communist Party at that time was because his family living condition was poor, his children had to go to school, and he didn't have a uh, money to support their education and the party could not uh, support him either. Secondly, he leaked confidential information with, uh, with relation to his family, his wife's relatives and uh, to free himself from this situation Siu Hang did not confess before the king, then Norodam uh, Sihanouk, uh, but he actually surrendered uh, before Lun Nal. And 
he was protected by Lonel. Now, when Tu Samut was still the secretary uh, of the um, Workers' Party, he disappeared. You, however, in your statement uh, on the 22nd of November, said that he had died. What do you know of his disappearance or death? Response. I personally have no knowledge of uh, this, but I have heard of it because when grandfather Tu Samut disappeared, I did not know of that situation. But in one afternoon, I went to his home to present him with some documents and I met his wife. He had uh, a child about three years old or more than two years old. I asked him, uh, asked his wife where Mr. Tusamut uh, was and she said that he had been to the, he had gone to the market and I asked which market had he gone to. She said Tul Tumpung Market, uh, the market uh, adjacent to uh, her house. And I was thinking at that time if he didn't return, perhaps he could have uh, had an accident, traffic accident, or end up being arrested. And at that time, I quickly reported to Salotso that. Uh, Tu Samut uh, had disappeared and I told Tu Samut on the account that I had uh, when I met uh, he, uh, Tu Samut's wife. So, Lot saw had his people who worked at the hospital and at the military section. So Lot saw conducted a search uh, through the, the, his men. When he asked uh, his men at the hospital he could not get any information because there was no one wounded uh, admitted to, to the hospital of uh, uh, bearing the name to Samut. At the military line, Nut uh, Panara, the man who already died, who had some friends in the military, who told uh, him that uh, Lonel soldiers told that uh, a big Israq person was arrested and detained at Lonel's house, tortured severely. He did not confess, although he was subjected to tortures. And the secret police of Lonel took to Samut to be killed at Ta Prum Mien Chai Pagoda, known as Stung Mien Chai Pagoda. That is the story relevant to Tusamut's disappearance or death. The President, thank you, Mr. Nguyen Chia. Since it is now appropriate time to take uh, the adjournment, uh, we will take uh, 20 minutes uh, break and resume afterward.